another one, ya bastard! Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. Non-transforming characters in the movies have always had a bit of a troubled history when it comes to the toys. These days they've gotten a lot better at it. They pick an alt mode that really suits the character and the design, so they can make the robot mode as accurate as possible, but still deliver a pretty good package. But back in the day, releasing a Transformer without an alt mode, it was absolute blasphemy. In fact, we still have cases of it to this day, but we discussed that in the past. When it came to the first movie, the most problematic release was Scorponok. I mean, what the f do you do with Scorponok? I mean, I guess you can pack him in with some larger figures, but that's not going to be enough for some people. And you can't just nix the robot mode, that wouldn't really fly in that market. So they did the best thing they could, and came up with a robot mode that admittedly turned out pretty well, except for one thing. This figure could have been amazing, but oh boy, it has one fatal flaw. First thing you're going to notice right out of the box is that Scorponok has fantastic mechanical detail and paint. Like seriously, Jesus, what amazing detail they've got here. Look at all that bronze paint in the middle and all the gears and everything molded in. And the feet, ooh, the chunky feet, damn they good. And that head sculpt, man, that is a fan Fantastic head sculpts. Even painting all four eyes there. Jesus, fantastic. Articulation is also decent with two ball joints per arm and a spinny thing. So yeah, that's pretty much all the positives he has. He's just an all around great figure in terms of design. The way he looks is amazing. They've even got wonderful black paint all over here and it's nice and durable. It's been fine all these years. So, great job, right? Where's the tail? You might notice at the back here, there is a hinge here with nothing attached to it. Where did the tail go? The tail is missing. I don't know where the tail is. Oh no. Well, actually, it's right there. There it is. So what's the problem with this? Why is it crumbling to dust? You'll notice as I take a look at it, if I just briefly grab that, it breaks off super easily. Like I can really just go boom, easy, simple as that. Now I'm just doing it on camera now so I can show you because I'm going to chuck that out when I'm done. I don't really need any more. So don't worry. I know that I'm destroying the accessory, but who cares? What is wrong with this particular accessory? Well, I say accessory, but it's a main part of the figure. It's not something you can just ignore, like the Predator guns from the G1 toys. So, it's not GPS per se, but it's accomplished by roughly the same thing. For safety reasons, they made sure that this section wasn't cast in hard plastic. This thing can't be hard because then it's sharp and spiky, so they had to make it out of a soft, rubbery plastic. To illustrate my point, let's bring in Dark of the Moon Scorponok. From the Cyberverse line, yes, not the Cyberverse we all know on television, the uh, Dark of the Moon Cyberverse, the, the Legends line. Nice, soft, bendable plastic, nice and easy. The same principle applies to the tail here, perfectly fine, except the rubber wasn't mixed properly and it dries out really easily and becomes brittle like so. It's breaking like f chocolate here, you, you can see on camera. And as such, it breaks off super easily. I bought this from a close friend of mine and he sold it and was like, yeah, the tail's intact, it's all good. So I got it and I transformed it first time at the restaurant and that is instantly when it broke. So right off the bat, you can already see the problem. It, it affects all copies. It's not something you can avoid. So the question remains, is he worth it regardless of such? Can you get over that and still appreciate his qualities? Well, let's move this nonsense to the side so we can uh, actually take a look and see if it does work well. Quickly in terms of sizing, he's about 6 centimeters wide and 9.5 centimeters long, ignoring the missing thing back there. I can't measure the other part because it broke off. There's, there's no way for me to do it. Sorry guys. Of course, measuring him might be a little bit difficult because these bits love to come undone. The tabs in here are not sturdy at all. Another big issue. Even if, by some miraculous reason, you do have a stinger that functions perfectly, which you can't because of the way it's manufactured, you still gotta deal with this sh**. Uh, so it's an alt mode that looks amazing but doesn't hold together and crumbles to bits. Looks great, but in terms of structure, not so great after all. I really want to like this. It's a figure that I wanted as a kid but was never able to get. But honestly, I'm glad I never had the chance to because I avoided those horrible, horrible experiences. As an adult, I can kind of put it into perspective, but I would have been devastated as a kid if that broke. Ah well, it is what it is. Anyway, time for the size comparisons. Here he is next to a standard Legion figure and you can see again very similar sizes, although this one has shrunken over the years because of plastic budgets and all that stuff. So old Legends figure 
figures were definitely larger, even though they covered the same price point. Moving on, size comparison with a standard core class figure, a standard War for Cybertron Micromaster, and Crumbs. Now, surprisingly, this does have quite a few steps of transformation. You think for something that never had an alt mode to begin with, it wouldn't, but they've put a lot of work into this. First thing you want to do is bring out the legs like so. Real shame they're not tabbed in. I really wish they were able to be tabbed in properly. That would have really brought this thing together. There's a hinge at the back here that rotates all the way down like that. The knees are on ball joints and sit like that with these weird claw thingies there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Fantastic, I guess. This section rotates downward like that and you've... <laughs> I guess you got a robot mode? Okay. Uh... <laughs> Oh god, Jesus Christ, this is a stupid robot mode. And I don't really mean that in a good way, it's just so bonkers, it doesn't even look like a Transformers design. Even taking into account all the Michael Bay stuff that happened, this is just totally weird and whack. Oop, duh, that's another problem. My point is, hypothetically, this could work. Still got the lovely paint there, and the face actually works really well in this instance, but it's just not really that well done. For starters, all of this shit at the front here makes him incredibly front heavy. A slight tap and the whole thing goes falling over. Not to mention no heel spurs, so he's also back heavy. Both front heavy and back heavy, meaning that he can fall over in a moment's notice. Not really good. I realize it's not the easiest to stand Legends figures, but this is a really weird exception. Arms are really well articulated with all those ball joints and those spinny arms. Plus it's got ball jointed hips and ball jointed knees, but that presents my next problem. The way this back panel is located, it constantly pushes the ball joint off. So you can't really get any neat poses out of it. And when you do, these get stuck together and get all tangled. It's just not fun to pose. The scorpion mode was fantastic to look at, but it was missing this thing. But this thing, this thing just ain't great. And it's weird, in the first movie, they just kept trying to give him a standard robot mode, because I guess he had to transform into something back then. Why do they keep trying to give non-transforming things robot modes when it doesn't make sense? Or at least do it well. This isn't done well. Ugh, this is just not oh, bad. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna leave that on the ground. I don't want to keep balancing it. I want to like this thing. I really do, but uh, there's not much to it. It's not the most terrible thing I've ever seen, but it's just not a great robot mode. There's just too much to finagle around that just makes it not fun. And combined with the brittle parts that just break off and the alt mode that just doesn't hold together well, it doesn't really feel worth it. And the thing is, you don't have to get this. This isn't the only Scorponok of this size we have. You can always get the one that came with Studio Series Blackouts. So maybe you don't want to spend that much money on a figure. Well, there's always the Dark of the Moon version. It only transforms into a gun. That's about it. Gets the job done. Yes, it's a lot smaller and far less detailed, but you're not stuck with this clunk. And at least the rubber parts actually function properly. And yeah, this guy does come with a pretty f awful Cyberverse figure that you might not want to get, but you can always just sell that off without this guy. So he's kind of outclassed by everyone else, and he's just not great to begin with. So let's hope I can keep him up just enough to get the size comparisons. Don't fall over, you are five centimeters long and nine centimeters tall. Now gently, gently over to the other side. Don't fall over, don't fall over. Come on, ah, ugh. Okay, now we got the standard Legion figure, the standard core class figure, the standard War for Cybertron Micromar. And crumbs. There, did it. I don't care if this guy falls over anymore. And look, I'm not gonna pretend that a lot of figures from the 07 movie in the Legends lineup were great. Most of them, sorry to say, were f terrible. And I just realized that I was supposed to review him alongside the Cliff Jumper. I think they came in a two pack, but. And I'll do Cliff Jumper another day. I'm not doing the transformation of that guy again. I'm not reviewing that guy again. He's just bad. If he was just bad on his own, I could easily just put him in the class of these guys. And yeah, whatever it is what it is. But that brittle part there, that puts it over the edge for me. That just makes this absolutely not worth it. This mode looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. I really want to like this, but it's just missing something, and in my eyes, that's unacceptable. If you really, really want a Scorponok at this scale, just get the Cyberverse Commander version of Blackout. That Blackout is deeply disappointing, but at least the Scorponok works quite well. You can also just get the Studio Series version, which comes with a bit of a lackluster one, but it'll do in a pinch, I suppose. Yes, it's got less articulation than either of them, but but it's not the worst thing on the planet. And failing that, well, maybe Dr. Wu will make one. I mean, they did Mohawk and Scalpel. They could always get around to a Scorponok in due time. Although maybe that's not likely because Studio Series versions already exist, but hey, I'm open to it. If they release one, I'll probably take a gander as I always do. My point is any of those options are better than this. In fact, just not having a Scorponok at all is better than this. No one's really made a replacement stinger for that, so you can't really upgrade it at home. There's not really much of a choice here. This breaks with the ferocity of gold plastic syndrome and you're kind of stuck with it. So as 
such, this just is flat out not worth it. I really wanted this one as a kid, but I could never find it because I don't think they had the two packs in my area. But I'm glad I didn't have this as a kid because I probably would have blamed myself for that breakage, which I know now affects all copies, but child me wouldn't have known that. You would have felt deeply guilty for something like this, and I'm glad I didn't have to go through that. So I guess I dodged a bullet there. Thank f Anyway, enough of that. Enough talking about adorable figures that... Ah, shit. I think the footage got corrupted. Guess I gotta figure out something to do for tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video is, of course, going to be these guys. So until I figure that out, see you then, I guess. <laughs>